June 7th from 8 to 3, they're going to be building three homes in the Eden area. You must be 14 years old. And if you want to um, help build homes with Habitat for Humanity on June 7th, see Eric Hicks. He'll help you get signed up. Eric Hicks, stand up for everybody. Wave your hands. There you go. You'll see that guy if you want to help with Habitat for Humanity. Also, East Lake Farmers Market. Um, there's going to be an opportunity coming up. Uh, where they uh, get fresh produce and take it to apartments, and that's on Saturday. Eric, wave your hand again. That's what you see about that as well. Um, Sunday the 30th. I hate to make this announcement because I don't want to have, to, have, to have this event, but it's a Jack Farewell uh, party celebration after church. Yo, give it up for Jack. He's awesome. He's awesome. But, we're going to celebrate Jack on June 30th, um, and then also tea time on June 1st, uh, from 11 to 1. As... Did you all go? Yeah. Awesome. There was a tea for the Christian Love Pantry, and Dawn, uh, Dawn, raise your hand. Dawn uh, helps over there at the Christian Love Pantry. If you ever want to do that, it's not with the church, but it's an awesome ministry that helps so many people at the Christian Love Pantry. So see Dawn if you want to help with that. She'll tell you how to uh, help. Vacation Bible School is coming soon. If you want to help, see myself, Debbie Crane, wave your hand, Debbie, and Judy Hicks, if you want to help with Vacation Bible School, we, would, we will uh, sign you up. And if you don't volunteer, we will love and tell you what you're doing, all right? And Penny, Art Camp is coming up in a month. Penny, raise your hand so people can see who you are. That's Penny. If you want to help with Art Camp with kids, see Penny. And lastly, this is the last announcement. I know I have a lot, we have so much going on, and sometimes people don't know what's going on in the church. Mike Galloway, would you raise your hand like this? Okay. He leads Ageless Wonders, which is like the coolest thing. This is the second Tuesday of the month. People come together, they eat, and this week they're learning about bees. I thought we were learning about the birds and the bees, but it's just bees. It's just bees. All right, let's pray. Loving God, we pray that um, through this worship service, through the music, through the scripture, through the words spoken, God, that you will be lifted up. We pray that you will uh, help us grow closer to you and closer to one another. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Would you stand and worship with us? Good morning. So before we even start the worship this morning, I also um, want to ask you, if there's anybody that would be interested in helping out in the life? At all, like we need people to do the slides that you see. And, you know, we live stream the services and we need so many people to help get that kind of stuff set up because right now, uh, Megan and myself do most of that over here. We have to be in the month and we won't be there. So, um, if there's anybody that's interested in learning to do some of the stuff in the back, uh, come see me and let me know and I will show you what to do. So, let's watch it.
So if you want to go to Kids Church, I see Judy packing some stuff up. It is the most fun kids church in all of Alabama. You may want to go to that. And everyone else, go and greet your neighbor and tell Mike Galloway to go on to Angels Wonders. He'd love to hear it.
racial justice, scholarships for special ministries such as the Bam Chapel on the Bam Road. Um, although there is now a smaller number of churches in the North Alabama Conference, there is an overwhelming atmosphere of peace, joy, and welcoming.
So if you notice, when you came in, you got a um, worship thing. Um, if you notice, it says, Dr. Uh, Rachel Donia. She's sick, so be praying for her. Send her a message, tell her you love her, but I'm here, so that's why. All right, so uh, today's scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 12. I will be reading from the Common English Translation. We don't preach about ourselves. Instead, we preach about Jesus Christ as Lord, and we describe ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God said that light should shine out of the darkness. He is the same one who shone in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we haven't been crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We have been knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. That's awesome, isn't it? It doesn't say that in the translation. I'm just saying, that's awesome. Isn't it? When you read something like that, if we were in a, um, a Pentecostal church, we would say, Amen! All right. Uh, we always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that Jesus' life can be seen in our bodies that are dying, so that death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Let's pray. Loving God, we pray that through this scripture, even though it might sound a little confusing, God, we pray that you will speak to us, that you will speak life into us. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So, I was at North Alabama uh, Annual Conference. Let me just tell you, it's long. It's very long. It's all day Thursday and Thursday night. All day Friday. I think we left Friday night at 8.30 for doing a dinner. And then Saturday, I would say it was all day, but it was half the day, but then it happened to flow over into Panera Bread. So it was, you know, it was a long, a long couple of days. That being said, when I found out Pastor Rachel was sick on Thursday, I thought, how on earth am I going to write a, a, a sermon on 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 12? So you're getting a little bit of that passage, but also something from Acts and a little bit about annual conference, all right? So let's not even call it a sermon. We're going to call it a good old talking, all right? Okay, so like I said, I spent all this time at annual conference. If you know me well, you know that I don't sit still, especially through meetings, right? And this is three days of meetings. Some of the reports were way too long. Some things lasted too long. But I can tell you there was such awesome and powerful worship. Um, there was engaging stories. And I got to see so many friends, old friends, and many new ones. And they're all sharing stories about the mighty work that God is doing. And awesome things are happening in North Alabama and the United Methodist Church. Um, I, I left conference so excited, and I didn't always feel that way when I left conference, but I have never been so fired up about what God is doing. Um, the beginning of this passage talked about the reminder to be humble and to be servants for Jesus. Paul reminds us to be servants. But when I was at conference, when I would talk to pastors, they would tell me about the awesome, humble servants in their churches and the creative, great things they are doing. It was amazing. It was amazing. So I love to hear that. What is this talk about clay pots? We talked about this in Sunday school, and Kyle, and, and I think Lucas is actually the one that said, it describes us as clay pots because we are vessels to be filled. Our youth are so smart, aren't they? Vessels to be filled. Um, but it's also because clay pots are fragile. Uh, when I was younger, I worked at Lowe's. Can you imagine that, me working at Lowe's? So uh, I worked at Lowe's in the garden section, and part of my job was cleaning up all the things that people broke. And a lot of things got broke all the time were clay pots. Do you think I ever broke any? I did, I did. So who here has broken a pot 
before it played pot. Yes? Okay. That's us. We're described as clay pots. So we are vessels that are filled by the Spirit, but we are also fragile things. It's not about us. It's that God uses us. We're a vessel that God uses. Fragile people that the Spirit fills and uses to do great things. I know it's a weird description of clay pot, but that's what we are given. We are that vessel. And I, at this conference, I would say far better than the amazing worship. They had a bishop that was preaching, amazing. Far better than any presentation was just hearing stories in the hallway from people about what God is doing in their congregations and in their communities. Hearing stories about clay pots, vessels that God is using. It was incredible. I wish you could have been there to hear what people were saying and see the joy and excitement on people's faces. Um, church members of these communities doing great things. But what I always have a burden for at conference and things like this is when people talk about the nuns and duns. And I'm not talking about Catholic nuns. When I say nuns, those are the people uh, that don't attend church anywhere. They have no faith community. And duns are the people that they refer to that used to attend a faith community, but guess what? Not anymore, right? And um, this is uh, from Ryan Burge. He's an American Baptist pastor. He wrote a book called Nuns. And here's a quote. The fastest growing religious group in the U.S. is the nuns. Those with no religious affiliation. Who are the nuns? People disconnect from religion, just felt like religion, for whatever reason, was not a good fit for them. And so they drift towards people. They drift towards places where they fit in. They feel like they belong. And a lot of people, especially those who have kids, travel sports has become a major part of their life. So we heard a lot about nuns and duns, right? Um, and sometimes the past hurt, not feeling welcome. Um, maybe it's, they felt it wasn't relevant to their lives. There's so many different reasons. And I'll tell you the burden on my heart is not for um, us to grab people from other faith communities, people that are going to a different, a different type of church that's not who we're supposed to reach. It's the nuns and done that we would show them the love of Jesus so much, and not just in this building, but everywhere we go, that they would know the love of Christ. That's what we're called to do, and I believe that's what God is going to use us, these play pots, to do is reach nuns and nuns. And I was inspired to hear people doing new and creative things to reach these people groups. I got to go to a workshop that was called New and Different. And how cool was that, New and Different? It was churches that are doing things outside the box, so different than they've ever been done before. Silicata United Methodist inspired me. They uh, are one of those churches, as the scripture said, they've been kicked down, but guess what? They're not knocked out. They lost a bunch of their people, all right, over the past couple of years. Churches have faced COVID and all these things and uh, people leaving their church. This church in Silicaga, they said, we want to reach kids, right? And when they wanted to reach kids at this new and different workshop I was at, they said, when they wanted to reach kids, they realized all these kids are at travel sports and they're not coming. So they have decided they're reaching out to the kids that aren't at travel sports and special needs kids. They're doing all this stuff for them and they're loving them and they're loving their parents. How cool is that? God is doing new and different through play pots, through these vessels. And it was incredible. Um, and it's not pastors leading a lot of these things. It's people in the church. It's church members. It's you. Y'all are ministers, though. Did you know that? Y'all are your ministers. You're all vessels. You're all vessels. Paul talks about persecution in the scripture, and I believe this is a type of persecution that we have not faced in the United States, right? But I felt in the past couple years, at times, you have felt crushed or confused. Um, like I said, I've been going to this conference for 10 years. I can remember the past couple of years hearing heartbreaking stories about churches falling apart during COVID. It was really struggling. I can remember churches talking about uh, different discernment processes and the pain that was felt. But I can tell you that is over and there's something new and amazing happening as the Spirit is filling vessels to reach people outside the box. And it is incredible. It was so different. There's no longer this feeling that we've been kicked down, but a feeling that God is doing new things. Um, 
Churches are having awesome meetings. I, I heard about churches that were having uh, a white congregation and a black congregation, and they're meeting together, and they're having discussions about race. They're having dinner together. They're talking about getting along and hanging out. It's incredible. Things are happening in communities with the United Methodist Church dismantling racism. Um, we got to watch an awesome presentation about a church that's reaching out to families that are dealing with memory loss. Penny, did you see that presentation? It was awesome. It was awesome. They're bringing in people with dementia and letting them have a great time together and loving them. The United Methodist Counseling is doing powerful work about suicide. They're helping people um, that have had family members or loved ones commit suicide but they're also reaching out to people with suicidal thoughts and talking about a topic that we don't talk about enough in church. And it's powerful stuff. It's powerful stuff. We want to have something like that here. We've been kicked down, but not knocked out. Something big is happening. At the dinner we went to, it was all about people who break barriers, break barriers. When barriers are broken, mighty things happen. Um, and have you guys here heard of a group called CFAT? Anybody hear of that group before? It's Servants in Faith and Technology, and um, it's in the Limeville area. We're going to take a trip. We're just going to do it, all right? So um, the person that started that, Sarah Corson, um, she lives in the jungle as a missionary with her husband, but they help people come up with new technologies to take into these communities to help people in other countries and around the world facing poverty. Um, but she has done so many things in her life, and she received a Barrier Breaker Award, okay? And, um, and she has this place in line where we can learn great things for missions. Um, but when she received the Barrier Breaker Award, here's a quote that she said, You cannot follow Jesus without breaking social barriers. So I heard that we leave here today, we're going to break social barriers for Jesus. But all of this stuff at the conference, it reminds me of the Book of Acts. The last time I got to preach here was a couple weeks ago, and it was Pentecost Sunday. The Spirit of God filled vessels on that day. Vessels that were meeting in a house, they were filled by the Spirit, and then they started speaking in other languages, reaching to people outside of their circle, and doing radical ministry as clay pots for Jesus. And I would say, annual conference reminds me of Pentecost and the Book of Acts. It's new journeys and new birth, and so different than what we've seen before. Um, I would encourage you, if you haven't, especially after Pentecost, we're still in that season, read Acts chapter 8 through 11. It's incredible. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what happens in Acts 8 through 11. Chapter 8, there's this guy named Saul. Can you tell that I love the book of Acts this week? There's this guy named Saul. Have you ever heard of him? He's the biggest jerk in the Bible, in my opinion. Total jerk. He persecutes people. Christians are scattered because of this guy. Total jerk, all right? Do you guys know anybody with a total jerk? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and definitely don't point at somebody in here. Unless it's Lucas. So, um, this guy was a total jerk. Acts 8, another person we see in this, in this chapter is Philip. He's doing ministry in Samaria. And you know who he meets? He meets a sorcerer. He's doing ministry so far outside the box. The Spirit is giving people to do things so different. So it's happening in the United Methodist Church. But he meets somebody who's a sorcerer. Anybody know a sorcerer? God? Who? Merlin? Okay. He knows a sorcerer. And this is something that nobody would have talked to, nobody would have reached out to. He ministers to the sorcerer and shares the message of Jesus with him. Unexpected people, unexpected places. The Holy Spirit is doing something new outside of the box. Outside of the four walls of a building or what normal faith communities do. Sounds like what's happening in the United Methodist Church. Verse 26 through 40 of Acts 8, Philip meets an Ethiopian eunuch. I don't know if you know this, but the Ethiopian eunuch would not have been welcomed in the temple. He wouldn't have been talked to by the religious people. He would have been considered a less than. What does Philip do? Philip is led by the Spirit to have a conversation, talk to him, they talk together, and guess what? He wants to be baptized. This is breaking social barriers, because what does Philip do? Philip baptizes the Ethiopian unit. This is something that's happening in the United Methodist Church. People are breaking barriers. Those things that people thought we shouldn't do or can't do in the past. You can't follow Jesus without breaking social barriers. Remember that guy named Saul? Because this is also mentioned in that same chapter. That guy who's been a total jerk. 
Well, don't give up on anyone. Because this guy who is the worst of the worst has an experience with the Holy Spirit. And guess what? He is now on the team of the followers of Jesus. Those people that drive us crazy that don't like us, one day might be sitting right next to us on Team Jesus. All right? So don't give up on people. Pray for them. Pray for them. Saul has an encounter. He changed his name. Saul. Paul has an encounter with Jesus. Holy Spirit is at work. Acts 9, we meet a female disciple named Dorcas. Is that the coolest name you've ever heard? If you're a female, give thanks and praise to God that nobody named you Dorcas. All right? She does ministry with the poorest of the poor, and she makes clothes for them. And we celebrate Dorcas because she does ministry outside of the box. She's making things for the poor and taking care of those in need, doing things so outside the normal realm of church. And then last, in Acts, 9, in Acts chapter 9, Peter stays with somebody who is a tanner. And a tanner, I know what you're thinking, is it's summertime, and somebody that just goes and lays on the beach all day. But like, no, they don't wear sunscreen, they lay on the beach all day, but I'm saying that's not what it is. A tanner is somebody that works with dead animal skins. It would have been the dirtiest of jobs. Do you guys know who Mike Rowe is? Dirty jobs? Yes, some people. This would have been like the dirtiest of jobs, all right? And this follower of Jesus, she, Peter, stays with a tanner. He grew up his whole life thinking tanners are the worst. They have the dirty job. You don't go near them. They're filthy. And to stay in his house, to stay in his house. See, we follow Jesus. Barriers are broken. Barriers are broken. And I'm convinced that's what's happening in the North Alabama Conference of the United Methodist Church. And I'm even more convinced that's what's happening at Health City United Methodist Church. Can I get an amen? amen? We will break barriers. We are clay pots. Vessels that are fragile, that feel like they can be broken. We are going to be filled by the Holy Spirit to do things new and different and reach people, especially the nuns and duns. And I'm convinced of it. Um, the book of Acts, if we are willing to be uncomfortable and try new ideas and do things like they did in Acts and reach people outside of the box, go where the Spirit leads us. I ask you now, who can you share the good news of Jesus with? What they did in Acts. Maybe people at work? People in the grocery store? We can't just wait for people to come here. Um, who are the souls in your life? The worst of the worst, the jerk. Pray for them that they will be part of us. What about somebody like the Ethiopian eunuch who doesn't feel welcome? Um, how can you share God's love with them? What about the tanner, the person that everybody thinks is dirty, has an awful occupation or sinful or just unclean? How can you share the love of Jesus with someone like that? And what about Dorcas, who doesn't really fit in with the rest of them because she's just doing awesome ministry? How can you find somebody that's doing work for the poorest of the poor and help them and show love to them, walk beside them? What new and different things is God leading you to as an individual and us as a people? Um, I'm going to close with this, but they had evangelism awards that were given out, and this person's not here today. Uh, but they gave out evangelism awards to people doing outreach in awesome ways. I want you all to know that, like, Hank, in the past several weeks, you know Hank Alexander? I thought, like, most of our kids were on vacation last week, and I was like, we're not going to have you. Hank walks in with, like, six kids. Hank gets, gets the evangelism award for inviting people to church lately. So give it up for Hank, and you know he's not here. Can you imagine, can you imagine if the adults in the congregation did that? Can you imagine that? If adults are bringing six people to things? Uh, just imagine. So I have some challenges. I want everybody here to take this challenge. First, do ministry outside the box. Think, I want you to talk to people, pray, ask Jesus, how can I do things when I'm not here? Right? A lot of the ministry of the book of Acts and what I'm hearing in the UMC is people doing things outside of the church building. Okay? That's number one. That's you as an individual, but us also as a community. Number two, here's a challenge, and I think all of us can do it. Every person invite one person. And I'm not even talking about the church service. If you feel like your friends aren't ready for that, Ageless Wonders is a great opportunity for somebody to come hang out and have a meal. Don't you think, Mike? I've actually worn bumblebees today on my shirt. 
and inspiration of Mike Galloway have to be called, all right? That's an awesome opportunity. Think of somebody you can invite. Invite a family to vacation Bible school. Um, invite them to play pickleball or ramp building or just to eat with your church group. Invite people into our faith community. Pray with the same Holy Spirit that Paul talks about filling vessels in 2 Corinthians. The same Holy Spirit that was at Pentecost. The same Holy Spirit that changed Saul, that healed the person named Dorcas, that caused Peter to care for the unit, that caused uh, the hangout with the tan, brought the UN and, and the same Holy Spirit that was at the conference that is filling churches to do new and different. May that same Holy Spirit fill us. Let's pray. And I'm going to encourage you to pray. Put your hands like this, if you will. If you're not comfortable, you don't have to. Holy Spirit, fill us. We are your vessels. God, we are open to new and radically different, whatever it is you're calling us to do. We pray that you will help us love people that others think are sinners, that people think are dirty or unclean. Help us to love everyone. Help us to love the poor, the needy. Help us to care for our communities. God, help us to love people when we're outside the walls of the church. But God, also help us to invite people to the amazing, awesome opportunities that are within Cal City First United Methodist Church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. Um, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. We do not have the uh, liturgy on the screen, but I'm going to pray a prayer of confession for us. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We fail to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the Forgive us, we pray, for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, it gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in your fear and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. I will invite those who are helping serve communion to come forward. Um, and I want to let everybody know, this is not a United Methodist table. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. All we ask is that you have a heart that's hungry for God.